Folks, welcome again to Tenacity's Instagram Live. Our show is called From Good to Great. Today we've got Jamie Saratani in the house. Let me connect with Jamie and he'll be with us shortly. Let's see what we can do here, work a little magic. As we wait, I want to just share a little introduction. Jamie, (laughs) what's up? Jamie taking all necessary precautions. Nice to see. Good to see. This guy is a safety first athlete. That is awesome. Dude, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining us. We're so thrilled to have you. How you been holding up, Jamie? How's life? Uh, well, first of all, thanks for having me on here, uh, Drew. Great to, uh, to reconnect uh, during this very tumultuous time. Um, yeah, just trying to, trying to exhibit all precaution and uh, maintain my, well, socially distanced, very distanced from you and uh, six, six feet apart from others, even family and all that. So uh, I think it's important to do, uh, you know, what they're telling us to do and, and, and be socially responsible. But uh, I think it's o- okay to have a little bit of fun at the same time. So, uh, Good. Well, we're thrilled to have you here. Let me take a second and let our listeners and viewers know a little bit about your tennis career, a little bit about your biography, and then we'll get into some questions about our theme, which is good to great, how to make a big jump in your, in your tennis uh, performance, but also in any other endeavor that people are – hope and improve in. So Jamie started playing tennis at the age of three. He started playing tournaments when he was seven years old. He played New England uh, events, Nelta tournaments at the time they were called throughout his growing up. He seems to have played in every, every tennis club in the Boston area, Weymouth, Sportsman's, any others? He's trained oh, at yeah. Harvard currently. Harvard at Blue Hills, if, if all you guys... Oh, uh, over at Blue Hills. I played there a few times back in the day. That's nice. Great spot. Great. Wooven, Sweet. Wooven, yeah, so this guy's... Wooven, Wooven Racket time, Wooven Racket Club. All right. Just, so just this guy knows the terrain of Boston tennis like no other, that's for sure. And then when he went to college, he played college tennis at Brown University. Was all Ivy League for four years. And then went pro and has been on the pro tour since what year jamie how long you been on the tour uh well i started in 2005 but i didn't get to the the bigger tour till around 2008 so it took me a few years to work my way all right so been been striving to it and made the atp tour in 2008 but began the journey in 05 he's been ranked as high as number 45 in the world in doubles he's got four doubles titles to his credit including a win in doubles over roger federer and he's made the, made twice made the Wimbledon quarterfinals. So this guy's had an incredible run, a great career. He's also about, been part of the ten, Tenacity community, helping out at events and supporting us in a variety of ways since 2009. So it is awesome to have you. It's always such a treat to talk to you. Your energy is infectious among all of our kids and our whole community. So this is a real treat. So thanks so much Absolutely. for being here with us today. Absolutely. I wanted to start off just by asking you how you got started in tennis. What was the first, re- you know, who who brought you into the game? How'd you get sure. going? What was it like? Sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, um, I was the youngest of uh, three three kids. I had two older sisters, so we were kind of a tennis family. Um, and you know, I just kind of look up to them. You know, they were they were battling each other, and uh, my dad was kind of the uh, the patriarch tennis, uh, you know, kind of leader of the fam and, and kind of inspired everyone and got everybody pumped to play and had a also an infectious enthusiasm for the sport. So, uh, you know, that made it really easy and, and, and fun. You know, we had a lot of fun playing, which was, which was, you know, things that I remember the most uh, as a kid growing up. And uh, yeah, like I said, even at age three, my sisters were, you know, were two years apart, so five and seven, and they were pretty good. And, you know, I was, you know, looking up to them for, uh, <laughs> you know, for that inspiration. And, 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 you know, they beat up on me as a, as a youngster, but then I, I got them later on. <laughs> there you go. Nice, nice. And when did you, um, it sounds at pretty early age, but when did you start kind of taking tennis seriously? 
and like you know it sounds like you played tournaments from a young from we got a young start in the tournaments but what was yeah. some of the parts of your life where you began to take it more and more seriously sure well you know i early on i actually i think i mentioned this to you but i played my first ever tournament when i was seven which was uh kind of crazy to think about um i remember wow. it vividly i remember it vividly um and you know it's at that point, where was I it, it was just, i remember it was at the willows club up in andover you remember that place? No, uh -huh. north andover i believe it was and um i remember it was a friday night and uh my dad drove me out picked me up after school we drove up like 15, 20 minutes from uh, where we live in Reading. And uh, yep. I think it was just kind of him just kind of throwing me in the deep end and, and just kind of seeing if I could swim, you know. How'd it go? And, uh, and I remember the match quite vividly, actually. I lost the match. I lost the match. and uh, But I battled. And, and Didn't you? I okay. Remember, yeah, I battled. It was a three-set battle. I lost in three sets to, uh, you know, I think the kid was 11 or 12 at the time. He was a oh my gosh. pretty good player. And I just remember this is actually pretty. Uh, I'll share you a little personal insight to my to my tennis career, the first ever tournament. So I, I remember going into the to the locker room after the match. I was devastated. You know, I was pretty competitive already. I've been competing against my sisters for four years. You know? I bet. <laughs> so I lost the match. I was crying in the locker room by myself. Yeah. After the match, I was devastated and uh, been there I thought, before. I thought the world was coming to an end. And my dad came in and he put his hand on my shoulder and uh, he said, you know what? I'm proud of you. I'm proud of the way you fought, proud of the way you competed. And um, that meant a lot to me at that, at that time, <laughs> at that age. And wow. I said, you know, it's not about winning and losing. It's about how you fight the battle. And uh, I felt that at that age. And that was uh, something that stuck with me to this day. That's so, awesome. Good. That's some cool. good coaching, some good mentoring right there. That's totally. so valuable. Totally. So, Tell me a little bit about when you decided. So you had a really illustrious college career. Sounds like sounds like that was a great experience. When did you awesome. decide to go pro? What was it like? What was going through your mind? And how did you make sure. that decision? Sure. Well, I played a lot of other sports growing up. Um, so, you know, I mean, I did start tennis at an early age, but then I diversified quite a bit after that. I played basketball. Baseball was a big part of my life. Um, Loved to play golf, play on the high school golf team, high school basketball team, high school baseball team. So I played four sports in high school. Um, really? Did yeah. you play on the high school tennis team? I played one year, my freshman year. Um, that was uh, a great experience. You know, just one year. My dad encouraged me to play. Uh, we we did quite well. We 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 nice. Went undefeated in the in I believe in the Middlesex League. So we dominated. Did a uh -huh. really good job. Represented Reading High School, RMHS. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. <laughs> there are a ton of people tuned in from RHS here. What's that? Yeah. Okay. No, I'm just talking around. <laughs> no, 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 so no. yeah, so you had a great lot of so yeah. awesome to play a ton of sports. Yeah. So that was fun, you know. And then, um, so actually, you know, it wasn't really till college that I I really considered the pro thing. I actually that's not true. Once early on, one coach approached me. We we kind of did like a six month stint. Uh, my sophomore year of high school. Um, mm -hmm. so for all you youngsters out there that are thinking about going pro, I, I had that, you know, that experience and it was, it was tough, you know, people want to take me out of high school and move down to Florida, maybe just do the homeschooling thing, you know? Um, so I, I experimented with that a little bit and, um, you know, it wasn't for me. I felt, uh, like, like a lot of these young kids and, and even the pros, you know, nowadays feel a lot of pressure yeah. um, to, to perform and, uh, you know, be the next Andre Agassi. I mean, I remember in, in high school, my sophomore year, uh, you know, my, my, my girlfriend at the time was like, oh, he's going to be the next Andre Agassi. I was like, whoa, you know, like, that sounds cool. Uh, but it's yeah. not that simple, you know. It's <laughs> easier said than done. Much easier said than done. So I, I, uh, I learned the hard way, and, and it kind of turned me off from tennis for a bit. So that's why I went back to those team sports and mm -hmm. went back to just kind of having fun with my friends, you know. And I think that's an important thing to have a little diversified – balanced lifestyle um especially at that age i just wanted to be kind of a normal kid and, and have my buddies and play team yeah. sports play pickup football you know like two-hand touch slash tackle nice. you know? <laughs> so um so then so it wasn't there, until I, after college that you yeah. really thought hard again about pro tennis yeah 
exactly. So I went to I went to Brown and and still kind of had thoughts of baseball in my mind as well. I was pretty into the baseball thing for a while, and then I'd say it was about my junior year. That's kind of when I I kind of dialed in and, and kind of just made that my primary focus and uh-huh. and um yeah it's kind of things kind of went from there and just played, wow, a few, so... played, a, played a few played a few futures that summer and oh, uh, did you? got a little taste of it you know okay cool mm. so when you when you made that decision that seems like maybe you set a new goal for yourself right you said okay this is my next frontier i want to be a pro i want to give it a shot mm. and so last week when we talked to troy mm. troy says well yeah you know your commitment's got to match your goals. A lot yeah. of kids say, oh, I want to play D1, but they're not necessarily they're playing once a week or whatever. Yeah. So if you got an even more ambitious goal of playing pro, how did you make your commitment match your goals? What did you then start to do? What did you then start to sure. add to your regimen to, to, to get where you wanted to go? Sure. No, that's a great point. And uh, I did tune into that interview with Troy. I thought that was a great interview. A lot of great insights yeah. there that, that definitely resonate resonate with uh, my experience. And obviously, we, we competed together and we're still buddies to this day. So, um, yeah, he's, he's, he's a great dude. Yeah. Talked to him a lot. Talked to him a lot this week, socially distant. So, uh, <laughs> but yeah, so, you know, you get to that point where I just – I had just been so diversified. I almost kind of spread myself too thin. But then once you finally make that decision, um, I feel like that's the big challenge in life for a lot of these young guys, myself included, when I was growing up. I was like, you know, what is my passion? What do I want to do? You know, what is what is my calling, so to speak? And uh, I always toiled with that. And then, you know, once you finally get to that realization of like, okay, this is what I want to do. Right, for me, it was tennis. For other guy, it might be another sport. For another guy or girl, it might be – the art world or movies, whatever it is you want to do, yeah. you dial in on that, on that goal. Um, and then just do really, really everything in your power um, without hurting anyone or anybody um, to, to maximize your potential, you know? And, and so that means, what does that mean? That means asking questions. That means seeking answers, seeking solutions, um, to to really develop your talent, your ability, um, and and create new talent. You know, I I, re- I honestly believe that skill and talent are just a, a byproduct of doing the right thing every day. You know, finding a great process that enables you to you know improve your skill sets, um, and then do it consistently every day. So you know, surround. So yourself. let me ask you that: what what was the process? What was it? Because because cause Troy last week said, and I thought it was great, like, you know, you have a plan, you commit mm-hmm. to the plan, you execute it, and mm-hmm. that's going to lead you to your goals. I'm wondering, well, I think that's true if you've got a great plan, mm-hmm. if your plan is a, a really good. But mm-hmm. how did you? How does a person know that their plan's going to work, that this is the right way to get to where I want to go? How did you sure. figure that out? What was your process like, and how did you continue? How have you continue to refine it over the years i mean you've been at it for quite a while now yeah no great question uh you know i i think before any of those details of the actual process come in i think the number one ingredient to that process um is is a profound and deep belief in oneself you know if you have to have that belief in your ability um and and i had that you know and that that was always something that um came from really, really deep within myself. And I, and I, I focused on that a lot, you know, I, to the point where I remember in, in college at Brown, I put the word believe as my, as my um, background on my phone. So anytime I picked up my phone, I saw the word believe. And, um, and you know, I remember that to this day. And I, actually people would make fun of me uh, when I was at school. Oh, believe, believe, you know. But, but, but the people that got it and that get it, they loved that about me. You know, and, and, and yeah. you know, guys like Adil Shamastin, who's still a good friend of mine, um, you know, he went to Brown as well. He's had uh-huh. an amazing career on the tour. Uh, he used to love that about me. He's like, yeah, he, and, he, and it would kind of become an inside joke about me. And he, he used to mention it to me, you know, and people that like that and were into those types of things, because not everyone wants to be the best they can be and maximize and all that stuff. It's not for everyone. It's a very unique, yeah, yeah. it's a unique lifestyle. 
Um, and, and, you know, that's kind of getting back to the meat of your question is it became a lifestyle. You know, so once you have the belief, then it becomes a lifestyle. So, okay, yeah. what do you, what do you want to do? You want to be the best you can be? All right. You got to go all in. If you're all in, then so you, what you, then do you to get do that? to know how big Did you, you get up be. early and do the, so what, the so shadow so swings so, like yeah. uh, Troy was saying? And what, what, what other ingredients was in that recipe of, of your preparing uh, yourself? Oh, shadow yeah, swing. I, as never we far away. Shadow, shadow swing. Well, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm kind of famously known on the tour as, as a guy that I always have my racket in my hand. No matter, no matter what, no matter what's going on around, you know, on court, off court, I just like to have the racket in my hand because I believe if you're holding the racket, you know, you get to feel the grip, you get to, you know, feel the shot, the stroke, you know, I mean, I'm always trying to, I just started working with a new coach recently. I'm, a, I'm 38. I feel 29 in many ways, 22 in many ways. But, you know, at this age, you know, having an open mind to learning, to you know, improving technically, you know, I, I, I'm a good athlete and, you know, I'm a great competitor. Um, technically I, you know, everyone's trying to improve things in their game, myself included. So, yeah. you know, I'm still trying to do that at this age. And, you know, you can, like you said, do those shadow swings. I started working with a new coach recently and learned about, you know, just technical efficiency, uh, in the strokes, which is important. And like you uh -huh. said, doing shadow swinging, um, you can, you can name, so many little details that you can get to diet, sleep, proper sleep cycles, yeah. diet, diet, nutrition are key, stretching, yoga, injury prevention, wow. um, super important. Has there ever been a time, Jamie, in your career where you really felt you made a big jump? Like maybe it was in when you got to your top ranking. I think that might have been when in, in, in 08 or uh, maybe when you just, I don't know, at any stage when you said, Boy, I'm I've been a big. I went from you know our little theme here is good to great. Is there was there ever a yeah. time when you felt like your, I don't know, yeah. level of competitiveness, level of performance, level of whatever, like like took a big bounce and spiked up, and you were like really feeling good sure. about where you're at. Sure, yeah. I mean that's a great great time that you mentioned that 2008, 2007 to 2008 transition. I went from I remember I started 2008. I told this story recently about 400 in the world. Um, ended that ended two thousand sorry two thousand seven. I ended one twenty nine, and then by the by June of two thousand eight, I was forty five. So, whoa! That, I remember. <laughs> that's <laughs> yeah, a great. That's amazing. Thank you. I appreciate that. Appreciate that. It was it was a it was a pretty awesome thing, and and I remember why you said good good to great, and a big reason for that was commitment. You know, um, I you know was was traveling, getting to know the tour, getting to know the world, really, you know, getting to know myself. Um, you yeah. learn a lot of things about, about yourself when you travel and, and, and you're on tour, you're alone. I was alone uh, most of the time, you know, connecting yeah. with other players and buddies, but I didn't have a coach in the beginning. And I was just kind of yeah. kind of winging it in, in some respects and getting to know how, how the lifestyle works. But, you know, I had a few coaches here and there that would help me out. But um and then finally, I just, uh, you know, I just got super, super focused, you know. So that commitment word that Troy uh, used the other day resonated with me during that time. And I just said to myself, I remember vividly, I went to Europe for the first time, which was a big step. So good to great. And, you know, the epicenter of tennis is in Europe. It's a great, it's a great sport in this country, but a lot of, a lot of uh, the tour is based over there. And... Um, I was able to play every week, uh, and I just said to myself, "I'm yeah, not." tournament every week. Yeah, I, I did something really wild and adventurous during 2008. I went to Europe in March, and I said to myself, "I'm not coming home until I'm top 100." That no was my, way. That was my commitment to myself. Yep, I said I'm going to do whatever it takes. I'm going to get to top 100, and um, and I said, uh, "Yo, boss man, boss man, Chris just uh, he." tuned in <laughs> yeah nice All right nice um so i said to myself i'm not coming home i'm gonna do whatever it takes i'm gonna play every week i'm gonna learn i'm gonna grow i'm gonna challenge myself i'm gonna grind and uh just really dial in and um so that was march of that year i came home and so i was there almost nine months wow 
I got back. And was that, were you always playing doubles? Were you playing doubles then, or were you playing singles then? I was still playing singles at the time. So I was playing both. Uh -huh. but I was about okay. six, my best was about 620 in singles, so I got to about 620. Uh-huh. And, um... I uh, I was playing, started to play the challengers, which is a big step up, so a good to great. So I'm, I I made that step up from the futures to the challengers, and okay. I because I was winning many of these futures uh, in doubles, but playing like quarterfinals and singles, second round, a couple finals. I, I made a couple semis. I made one final in the future in singles, uh -huh. but I was consistently winning the doubles. You know, so I was up to around three hundred in, in, in doubles and six hundred in singles. Yeah, and that's why I said, all right, I'm going to play these challengers and just go to the next level. In and, doubles. Uh, in doubles, yeah. All in. That was like a little bit of a focus, maybe a commitment. Yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. Wow, cool. So, but but I would play the qualifying of the singles. Okay. And, okay. And then play the doubles main draw. So it was a, it's a it's a natural transition that many of the players make. You know? Nice. And at that point, I got to uh, it was my third challenger main draw doubles. We took the title. Frank. <laughs> really. My, my buddy Frankie Moser, big shout out to Frankie Moser if he's tuned in. He's a good good buddy of mine from Germany. We won a big challenger over in uh, in, in 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 France, in Orléans, France, just outside of Paris. Um, actually, I got the trophy right back there if you want to take a look at. It. Yes, <laughs> still living in it. Love it. That's awesome. Well, that's a special one. The first one's always a special. Dude, this is a huge deal, man. You won it. That was establishing yourself. I mean, I had to cement your own belief. I know you were doing a lot of you know reminding yourself and self-motivation but to win that how to cement your feeling mm. like mm. dude i can do this yeah like yeah. that's an incredible breakthrough it was thank you buddy i appreciate that it was it was yeah. really special and you know i got some calls from friends family back home and um you know it, it kind of made me feel like okay i can actually do this you know i can beat the top 100 players i can be i can beat players that are ranked in the top 100 and if i can beat players that are ranked in the top 100 once then there's no reason that i can't do it more than once or consistently and and, and do it regularly over time right, and, right. And so would you say that that win at that challenger was your best moment on the court we have a friend from tenacity marianne who's who's asking a question what's been your best moment on the tennis court up until now in your career <laughs> Well, Marianne, thanks for the question. Appreciate you tuning in. Um, that was a beautiful moment at that time. It was at that time in that moment, it was the best moment. But now at this point, the, yeah, I'm very grateful, very fortunate that there have been some even more incredible moments than that um, as I've continued to, to you know grow and evolve as a player and a person. Um, but, you know, I, I would have to what's, say – What's been the best? What, what beats that? That's what – what, what would be one that beats that? When you beat Federer, it has yeah. to be in your top five. Yeah, that's definitely top five. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's definitely top five. <laughs> yeah, it's I mean, top what? five moment. Top right? Five moment. What's that? Where was that? Where was, where'd you play that? Where was that event? The cool thing about that one was that it was actually in Basel on his home court. Oh! <laughs> Sorry, guys. I know you came out to see your boy, but uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> we had some other ideas. Yeah, I wow. mean, he's, he's uh, first of all, he's the, he's definitely the goat, you know, he's, he's the greatest of all time. And he's, a, he's a, he's a pioneer for our, for our game, our, our great game of tennis. And in so many, in so many different ways on court, off court, the way he, he, he you know, kind of cozies up to the fans, you know, I mean, that's, it's everything, you know. He's such a, a gentleman in that respect. Um, and, and, you know, tennis tennis needs that. We love that, you know. So That's good. Great. So yeah. good for our product. And, you know, to be honest with you, it was an amazing moment. And I'll tell you um, a little bit about that story. I was I was very nervous, you know, um, <laughs> to, to be honest. I was, <laughs> You're kidding, of course. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a human being. I'm a human being. Uh, <laughs> So I felt the, uh, I definitely felt the pressure. And, and actually, I remember getting to the event and uh, one of Roger's good buddies, Yves Allegro, he used to be a doubles player on tour and now is uh, still involved in tennis in Switzerland. Great dude. He came to me in the player transport and uh, he said to me, he said, hey, good luck playing the king. <laughs> And I was like what? Like I didn't like it didn't register really with me at that point because I was just I just arrived, 
and I was tired. I was coming from another tournament, so I didn't really know what he meant, you know? And then it kind of dawned on me. I was like thinking in my head, like, and I looked at the draw and I saw my name. No. <laughs> I saw James Saratani, Roger Federer. I was like, oh my gosh. Wow, this is going to be a... <laughs> and I literally started praying. I, I was just praying that I could... Pl I didn't even think about winning. I just wanted to play well and not embarrass Yeah, me, yeah, yeah, yeah. To be completely honest with you, you know? Of course. Uh, it was late in the season and, you know, you know, people are tired at the end of the season. So I just, I remember like just pumping it hard in the gym. I called my mom. I said, mom, I need your, I need, I, need, I just need your energy. I need you. I need you. I need you. Cause she's a rock, you know, she's an amazing. I, met. Yeah. I said, I just need, I, I called my family. I said, I need, I need that extra energy this week, you know? And she, and you know, she, of course they have support, super support. My family's been amazing since day one. They still are. Yeah. And we go out there, we get the job done. It was an incredible thing. I remember the first shot, I hit a serve. I hit a, I, I just knew I was going to serve his backhand, Roger's backhand, because yeah. he's a hander and I'm a lefty. And I'm thinking, well, Rafa uses his heavy forehand up high to Roger's backhand. Like, I should probably do the same thing. You know, yeah. like he struggles with that, you know? So I'm just, I just practiced my heavy kick serve the whole week leading up to the match. I, and I remember my very first service point, I hit a heavy kick up high to his backhand. And In he, the deuce court or the ad court? He was playing deuce. So I was, uh -huh. it was my, my very first service point. Um, oh, okay. I hit a high kick serve up to his backhand and he absolutely clobbered a backhand return, low, short, laser beam inside out. And I was like, oh no. And I scrambled over like super, I don't know how I got there. I got to it and hit this like half volley, backhand half volley, like deep, like just inside the baseline. It was like the best half volley of my life. I, I closed I close my eyes. I closed my eyes. <laughs> Yo, all that preparation, you you were praying. You got your mom's yeah. energy behind you. You yeah. learned that. You may have closed your eyes, but you did some preparatory work <laughs> spiritually to connect on that half volley, it sounds like. <laughs> pumped it in the gym. We did pump it in the gym hard leading up to that match. That was good. Crushed. So I somehow I just absolutely flushed that half volley. He missed the next ball. Like, you know, he missed the forehand in the net. I was like, all right, maybe I have a chance. I said, maybe I have a chance today. You know, like in my head, you know? And uh, yeah, it was, a, it was an amazing thing. My partner, um, Assam Qureshi of Pakistan. Great oh, yeah, dude. yeah, yeah. Great dude. He played phenomenal tennis the whole match. Um, you know, he really just, he, he played a plus tennis and, and, and just, I was, I was pretty dialed in as well, but he, he stepped up on, on, on a few huge occasions, um, as well. Wow. And, and we just so got was it done. he feeling you, were you guys like in a similar mentality? Was he like oh, yeah. nervous and just like, holy smokes, we got to play. We just, I don't know, like just feeling like super excited for the match as well. Uh, you know, I don't know if Sam gets was nervous. I'm sure there's every athlete gets a few nerves here and there, but he's yeah. um, he's a very he's a very um calm, at least on the outside. He he's very um stoic and yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. level headed, which is you know all great athletes have to be that way. And he he's yeah. no different. So. But you're a little more emotional, no? Are you a little bit more charismatic, a little more exuberant out there, or are you also yeah. cool and calm? Well, I like to get, I like to get, uh, you know, pumped up. I like to get the energy going. I think that uh, I play some of my best tennis when I do bring that that extra added, um, that extra added vibe, you know. Yeah. Especially earlier in my career, that match I didn't though. You know, it was weird. It's like I, I almost like you have such respect for for the goat and Roger, and you know, I just you're on his home court and you just kind of just, I mean, honestly, from my perspective, I was just trying to show respect and, but also like, I was just so focused on my own game that I just wanted to be, um, you know, I didn't want to be the Achilles heel of the team, to be honest. And, and yeah. that was my main focus and wow. God willing, it worked out. That's awesome. That's so cool. Yeah, it was, it was pretty, it was pretty dope. It was pretty, I'm, I'm grateful for the experience. Uh, obviously incredible that it went our way. Um, totally. I remember nice. after the match, this is a very interesting thing. A little shout out to Roger here. We uh, we get into the locker room, shower or whatever, and you know, all the players share the same locker room generally. And I remember sitting there just kind of with my partner, Assam, just kind of, you know, chatting about the win. And Roger comes back into the locker room after the match and he approaches both of us 
and he shook our hands again. He said, Hey, really well played. Good luck. You know, like again, which I thought was like pure class, you know, like, oh, I, never, yeah. I would never experienced that in my life. You know, I was just like, wow. Dude, that's as, that's as amazing as having that trophy right there up on your on your mantle, man. That was, <laughs> Roger, yeah. acknowledge your game like that. That's incredible. It was it was pretty odd. Well, I was just, I kind of, le- it, it was a great learning experience just to have him behave the way he behaves uh, with class during a loss. You know, so um, totally, it's good eye opener. Learned a lot from yeah, that, yeah. that guy. Jamie, we have another question from our uh, from a viewer that says, "Had you ever been?" um felt like giving up and then if so what uh what kind of kept you going in a time when maybe you felt like maybe it wasn't worth it if you've had that sense before great question whoever asked that um totally normal totally normal i mean all the time so i mean i remember when i was 12 13 14 years old battling with my my coach who was my dad at the time and um you know I think it's very normal, especially in an individual sport such as tennis. Frustration sets in. You know, a lot of people are results oriented and success uh, driven, but results driven too. And I get that, but it's also it can be um, it can be detrimental to think that way. You know, sure. And that's why we like to use that word process so often because it is a process. And you know, short term results can be can feel good, but it's it's long term success results in success that ultimately win the, win the race you know so drew you asked how am i here now you know that's why because yes i have to answer your question in in, in one word yes i have felt that uh that feeling of wanting to give up and um that uh, utter fresh not working well maybe my game's not working well every everything in my game at some one point or another has gone off even my i mean i'm known for being a great net player and volley player and I've had some awful, awful volleying days, you know, but you know what? It's it's back to that belief. Do you believe in yourself? Yeah, yeah. If you believe in yourself, you know that everyone has a bad day. You know, you can have a bad week, you can have a bad month, you can have a bad year, mm-hmm. bad, terrible years, you know, um, where you just, you just got to go back to the drawing board and say, hey, you know, or take a little bit of a break too. There's yeah. nothing wrong with you know, Take a week off, take a day off, take a month off. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, do something else, cross train. Um, just take a step aside because, you know, usually when you do that, um, one of two things happens. Either A, generally what usually happens is you realize that oh, I miss it and I love it. You know? For sure. And, and you get that hunger back because you need that hunger. You know, like, you don't want to get burnt out and frustrated. And, it happens I mean, a lot in tennis particularly. Well, yeah, totally. totally. Tennis is, it's, it's very common. And, uh, even even I've had great years where I was like, oh, I want to give up. You know, I was having a great year and I was like, I'm done. You know, I can't take it anymore. You know, and then you realize this is what we, love. you know, we we love to do it. We love the the battle, the fight, the um, that process of trying to get to a better place. And the cool thing about tennis is even Roger, Rafa, Novak, these top players, they're they're the pinnacle of their careers. There's still weaknesses in their game they're trying to improve on. So it's um, they're they're very process driven people as well. Wow. They're, they're, so they're you're, no you're actually saying a second ago there's like a little bit of a technique thing that you're learning maybe with your new coach. Would you be would you be able to get into that? I don't want you to divulge any secrets, but what's the what what are some details around that? Is it like yeah, super sure. technical I mean, that a regular tennis player wouldn't basic. understand the language, or is it yeah like so basic. so basic? So I mean, if you can maybe I can set up my my camera here where you can kind of get a vantage yeah. point from what I'm talking about. But nice. Let's see if I can do this. One second. This guy's always got his racket ready. This is he's he's made for this, man. He's made for these I, interviews. This is what I do. This I do. I said, let's actually do a little. So basically, I mean, I'm going to give a shout out right now to Steve Smith and Andy Fitzell. I know Andy, I saw Andy, he joined uh, about 10 minutes ago. So, Andy, if you're still on there, what's up, my brother? So we've been working. They're based down in uh, Orlando. They're awesome. And uh, they have a place called Great Bay's Tennis. So not good to great, but similar. There's actually another academy called Good to Great, but we'll get into that later. But anyway, Andy, oh, really? what's up? Okay. So I'm basically working on very simple things in my game. So. 
it's called the unit turn. So like on my forehand, for example, I used to have some funky stuff going on. So I'm trying to keep it more simple, you know, and just keep it technically sound. So this is, would be the basic starting position and basically just unit turn, which means like turn your torso. All right. And, and one thing also is I used to have my elbow down here on my forehand and uh -huh. I keep it, by keeping the elbow out, it keeps the racket head in a nice 90 degree position here. Got it. Yeah. And then you just, and then I don't know if you can see if I can just from here, I can just drop the rocket head and then just kind of like go straight through the target and get a nice long hitting zone. Like I used to sweep across the ball like so. Yeah. It's like, but that, that, that really minimizes the, the hitting zone. So it maximizes or increases the, the chance to make an error. So uh -huh. basically I'm trying to have a longer hitting zone. So if you see the racket going straight now, through the hitting zone like 12 to 18 inches and then the racket comes across to the side after you see nice. so before before i was coming here and going early across which has this like sweeping motion you get a lot of yeah. spin like i had a lot i had a very spinny forehand uh -huh. um and i would usually pull it because i look i'm pulling to the side uh, I but, see. Now, but now with this motion and i go down i go straight through the ball it's like much it. longer and you finish high with the racket off to the left. Tough to explain to you. The, uh, no, no, the, no. Uh, but I think generally the point you're kind of making, which is what you said at the beginning, is that you're looking always to be a little bit more efficient, be a, yeah. just a, a more efficient backswing and then come through the ball a little higher, greater margin for error with a larger hitting zone. Margin. So those are the tips. Those are the tips the pros are working on, guys. Not too much different from what a lot of our tenacity kids and our high school players that we work with are the unit turn. We've talked a lot about that. So Huge. this is not too far from where, we're, where some of our guys are at. Yeah. Um, all right. So I want to, we're going to kind of get to one of our um, kind of wind down here. I want to get to 10 questions. I don't know if you tuned in, if you saw this part of it with, with uh, Troy last week, but well, we yeah, got our 10 it. questions coming at you right now and the first of the questions is which tournament would you most like to win if you could win any of them in the world Ooh. <laughs> uh tough i i guess you got to go with the open on that one u.s u.s open the, the u.s, US, the, the US. <laughs> okay that was a no-brainer for troy troy was just like that's easy I would see. Yeah, but you, US open. Yeah, yeah. you got maybe a little more respect for some of the other big events so that's a little maybe different all mm -hmm. right, and then what would you said you played baseball, uh, basketball, touch football, all of these things. What's your second favorite tackle. sport? I played one tackle here. Oh, you did? Okay, excuse me. Didn't mean to diminish your one year <laughs> the, on the real gridiron. Okay, go ahead. What's your second favorite sport? Uh, basketball. Basketball. And I, re I see from your T-shirt you're, you're a C's fan? Yes, sir. I got, no I, got my, uh, I got my Tate, Jason Tatum. Oh, that might answer my, one of my questions here. Who's your all-time favorite Celtic? Well, current. All time, not now, not current. current. All time. Yeah, I mean, I, I unfortunately, I heard, well, fortunately, unfortunately, I heard Troy's response to this question. And Dude, be your own man, Jamie. Be your own man. You can follow with him. You can do your own thing. It's on you, I mean, Larry, you got, you can't beat Larry Legend, though. You know, I mean, I grew up, I grew up a Larry fan, man. I really did. Larry's Larry. You know? All right, Larry, it is. And what about now? Who's your favorite Celtic right now? Jason Tate's. I call him. I call him Tate since day one. I actually saw him early, <laughs> early in his uh, in his already illustrious Celtics career. All Big right. shout out to my man Tate's. You got you've been holding. You down should copyright day. that ASAP. Just so you can, if that if that never ever becomes his, his calling card, you'll need to get your credit for credit where credit is due. There. <laughs> True. What's the most fun shot to hit? The most fun shot in your game, or as tennis is played in your life, what do you think is the most fun? Finish volleys, service partner, finish volleys. Oh, <laughs> volley finishes, nice. Best, like la <laughs> like laser laser beam reflex volley finishers. There you go, sweet. Like that half volley you hit with Federer, ripped one. That one was nice. 
Um, what about Very an elite old. shot? I asked Troy if he could have one of his players have an elite shot, top of the line, one shot. What would it be? I heard his response, and I was I actually texted him to refute his answer. You, oh yeah, I had a friend did a little dialogue with another friend. We were that was a head scratcher for us, but respect. I was surprised. Tons of respect. Going, yeah, he was going with the Kafelnikov backhand there, which I respect. It was a beast backhand. <laughs> yeah. I, what would you say? No question about it. Would be the serve. I would like. I thought you, you would say. Yeah, that's what I thought. I was, I was like, "What is he talking about?" But that's that. Sure, it's Troy. That's cool. All right, who is a famous player on the tour that a bunch of us may have heard of that you root for that you think is somebody that you want to see succeed? Who? Um, not at the exclusion of others. Just because you mentioned one doesn't mean you're not rooting for others. I sure, guess. sure. I just sure, say, sure. who's a guy out there? You see his match or her match? You're like, yeah, let's go. Come on, let's hope you win. Yeah. Um, you know, I'd, I'd like to see Sitsipas win, uh, win a slam. You know, I Ooh. think uh, I think he's got the full package game, and I think it's just kind of a matter of time before he before he gets it done. Absolutely. Um, wow, Sitsipas. Nice. Yeah, All right, what's your there. least favorite exercise? Least favorite? <laughs> yep. You know, the actually, one that you got to do just because you know you got to do it, but you're just like, ugh, grind, this stinks. I'll do it, though. Well, I agree with Troy. I, I, I'm not a big fan of long-distance running. Distance um, running. But if I, I – and I don't do it because tennis players, to be honest with you guys, we don't really need long-distance running. I don't, know if, I don't know what your coaches tell you. I mean, it doesn't hurt to have some endurance. We all need it. But um, I would say interval sprints are uh, a big challenge. And uh, I actually – I don't not love doing it. It's It's – it's uh, it's very important because it, it builds up your endurance, but also your um, recovery time as well. Nice. And, uh, and so I, I recommend that everyone does them out there that's not doing them. They're tough. Got it. They're Interval tough. Get out there and work hard. <laughs> Alone. <laughs> Keep your distance. Yeah, um, what's your distance. favorite healthy snack? Uh, There's a lot. I like um, almond butter, nut thins. You know, nut fins, those are good. Butter. Actually, here's a good one. Wait, here's what? A good one. Well, nut fins? Butter. Nut fins are great. You can oh, get them at Whole Foods. Fins. Yeah, they're very healthy. They're like almond-based, uh, like rice crackers. They're they're great. They're light, crunchy, amazing. But here's nice. another great one. Try the Perfect Bar. There it is. Okay. Perfect bar. Okay. Perfect bar. Is that free pub for a Perfect Bar, or are you you're on the contract with them? I'm not on contract, but I will take a contract if you guys want to have yeah, it we, out. we can do. That's some good publicity you're just throwing our way. <laughs> perfect, perfect, perfect bar. Perfect. Check it out. All perfect. right. What's one goal you've got right now? One goal that you're striving for as we, you know, in these in this current time in your career? Uh, Tennis-wise? Yeah. Uh, two goals. I, I'm just trying to get better every day. That's the goal one. It's something. It's very something very small, like any small little improvement in my game. Um, and then, uh, I mean, my goal is to win a slam, so that's the, that's why I play. Win a slam, that would be sweet. All right, okay. And then, last question: Among your friends and colleagues, where do you put yourself in terms of the ping pong rankings? <laughs> like, if you're thinking about your friends Troy or other guys you play tennis with. Whoever you're cool with, the group that you consider your pals, right, where well, do you rank in terms of the power rankings of the ping of your ping pong ability? Well, I'll tell you one thing: I'm not as good as Mark Pullman's. Okay, little Mark Pullman there. I don't know if you guys know Mark Pullman's. He's an up and coming Australian jun uh, junior, young young uh, Aussie uh, tennis player, great ball player at tennis, great kid, even potentially even better ping pong player. I mean, he does some devastating things on a ping pong table. Um, I've played him many times. We traveled for about three, four months together. I played doubles together. Great dude. We did really well in many tournaments together. Um, but nasty but, ping pong. But when we, but when we, when I tried to compete with him on a ping pong table, it was, it just, things did not go my way. Okay. So you've got I, some humility to your ping pong experience. That's good. I so had I, a tough time getting to 10 throw you an invite
if you're interested, you be we would be more than happy to have you at the annual Sterling Open, which takes place over at my place in Somerville, mid December. If you think you can bring your t- your ping pong abilities to the table on that, for that occasion, we'd love mm-hmm. to have you. And with that, Jamie, I just want to thank you so much again for committing the time and sharing your experience and your wisdom and everything that you've got to offer the game. You know, we had a lot of folks here listening and watching who are kind of also striving to improve their tennis or themselves in other ways and just wanted to really thank you for all the time. If you had any any other message or any other comment, please share it. But we really, really thank you so much for the time and energy and today, but over the course of the years that you've you've been a committed supporter for Tenacity. So that's a lot of love for that and a ton of appreciation. True. I appreciate uh, the time. And uh, now I just want to thank everyone who did tune in for tuning in and uh, very grateful for the opportunity to give back and, and be a member of this awesome community. All right. Jamie, thank you so much again. Stay safe, and I hope we can be in touch soon. I'll look forward to you at the Sterling Open in, in a, about six or eight months, okay? I'll, I'll be there, and I might bring my, my shark buddy, Mark Pullman. <laughs> oh, sure. Oh, then we're all screwed. All right. Have a good day, man. Take good care. All right, man. Stay safe. All right. All right. See you, bud.